Please take your seats. Okay, ready? All right. You ready? Good? Okay. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a second aspect of the bi digital O-ring test. There are two aspects. The first one is how to test whether things in our environment, things we put on us, things we eat, things we drink, things we sleep on, things we use where we live, whether they are beneficial to us or detrimental to our health. And this is an easy way to test. And if you get going on this, your life will improve incrementally every day you do this. And the next time you buy something, you're going to buy something that helps you get along the road to wellness more and let go of things that don't get you there. So that is the first aspect that everybody can learn this. The housewives can learn this. They can learn what to feed their kids. They can learn what is good for their kids, what clothes are good for the kids, what clothes are not good for the kids. They can learn to do this. Okay. The second aspect of the bi-digital O-ring test that Dr. Omura here patented in the U.S. Patent Office took him seven years because it includes using a body part, a human body part called the O-ring that we make. This is a patented O-ring test that belongs to Dr. Omura. And the reason they gave it to him is what I'm going to share. And well, because it works. But I'm going to show you, show you this very scientifically essential discovery that he made. And the scientifically essential discovery that he made is based on a discovery of the Columbia University professor of physics named Dr. Pupin. And he worked in that and studied in that department and used the original materials that Dr. Professor Pupin used. And he learned that in experimental physics, there's a foundational phenomenon that two identical circuits create a resonance, meaning there's like energy between them, and transfer and communication. And it's like tuning in to a radio station. When you tune in to the exact frequency where somebody else is transmitting, for example, right here I have a transmitter, and right here I have a receiver, and it's set to 626,500 megahertz. It's a very high frequency that's passing from here to here. That guy picks it up because this guy is sending at that exact frequency. It's set to that frequency, and everything within reach that has that frequency, this thing finds it. That's huge. So this discovery in experimental physics is the foundation of our communications that we use every day. If I use a cell phone and I call my sister who's in Germany, I just dial a number and boom, my sister appears. Why? Because there's an exact frequency assigned to that phone number that is my sister in Germany. And nobody, else is, no, nobody else's phone is going to ring. Not only that, but if I miss that phone number just by one digit, I mean, let's say 9 out of 10 I got right, I get a totally different person. So it's essential that it be accurate and it's sensitive to pick up that information. Now, in our human body, we have things that are not healthy, like early cancers. And the, one of the original ideas was to create a preventive medicine where we can still help people. The cancer is not that advanced 
that it will kill you. And everything we do is so detrimental to your life that even though you can live a few months longer, you're going to be miserable for those few months longer because we're going to radiate you or we're going to chemotherapize you or we're going to surgically cut you up. And I've seen a lot of those people because I've been with Dr. Amura for 16 and a half years. I, I don't want to trade the price I'm paying to be well for the price people are paying to stay alive and live a miserable life. Okay, so that was the original idea. So, Dr. Omura discovered, I mean this is big, that not only electrical circuits, because Dr. Omura has a degree in electrical engineering as well as being an MD and having a doctorate of science from Columbia University, he found, he theorized, I wonder what would happen since these are two identical circuits that immediately communicate, like this communicates with that. These communicate automatically. I don't have to pray, God let it be, that this thing finds this. It just happens because it's a law of physics. It's a law of the physical universe. This thing just finds it. It's, it's, it's made that way. Same thing with a cell phone. If I turn this on, and, and I look for, like, for example, I look for all the wireless connections. It says network available, and, and you get a whole bunch, whatever it is that you get wherever you are. So there are a bunch of networks we can access because this thing picks it up. Not only that, they can tell you exactly where you are in the universe. That's a huge phenomenon for a phone, handheld, to be able to tell you exactly where you are and, and so forth. Anyway. That communication exists between molecules. That's the good news that he found. So if you have two identical molecules, let's say this is a sample, a biopsy sample of breast cancer. And let's say we have somebody who has a breast cancer. This molecule or pathology slide containing a bunch of molecules, including cells that are deranged, that characterize a breast cancer, okay? This is how we study that. It's called a pathology slide. It's made based on a biopsy with the exact cells from that body. So if we take the cells from that, from that body or general pathology slide with the same characteristics, then if we can find in that person a resonance, a communication, a connection, a detection of the exact same cells, that gives us the ability to find a cancer super early, like before anyone else can, anyone else can see it. And Dr. Omura found you can also find it on an x-ray, you can also find it by writing with your mouth, or writing with your hand, or writing with your foot. Medical information that's invisible to the human eye is transferred to the paper through the ink, and he can pick it up, and that's what we do all day long here. So that is the easiest way for us to diagnose a disease. What we do is look for, is there a communication, is there a resonance, is there a detection between what I'm holding and what's in that person's body. So let's say the sugar is what, uh, what is that, that information, okay? So this may be any disease or any positive thing, anything that we want to find in the body of a human being. We want to see, for example, what their insulin level is or what their um, vitamin C level is or what their blood sugar is. Uh, we can do that by getting the right amount of it in our hand and seeing that there's a response. And it's exactly the same as this with that. There's a response and you get a noise. And that noise, the way we know, because we don't hear it with our, eye, with our ears, it disables us from being able to hold an O-ring together. It is so detrimental when that connection happens. We did today, uh, my, my, my mic was not even on, but there was a random electromagnetic thing that happened that made this room explode with noises that got all our attention. I had to run and turn it off. That's what happens when this thing detects something in the environment. It makes such a noise that everyone else stops what they're doing and they can't do what they want to do. 
And that derangement of our nervous system and neuromuscular system and physiology is what he found can help us detect a medical problem in your body. It is huge. So let's say it's this. If I hold the same amount of the same thing and I point at this and you know use the bi-digital O-ring test I've already shown you, then there will be an opening. There will be an opening. I cannot help it compared to a calibration, which I told you about. This thing opens, and then the next one opens, and the next one opens, and he has 12 openings that he has defined. If there are 12 openings in this <coughs> communication between what I'm holding and what's on this table, that means it's an identical, it is close. It is so close that it's identical. So, one to one, I'm holding one and one to one. Then all my O-rings that, that he teaches, I cannot possibly hold them close because there's a resonance that happens, deranging my capacity to hold my fingers together. Now, if I hold two of these against one of these, it still opens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven closes, so it's six. There are six openings because it's no longer 12. So this is twice what I'm holding here. It happens to be that it goes to minus six instead of minus 12. If now I hold a third one, now if this is more than this, then it will be minus one, two, three, that's it. So it stops at minus three because this is more than that. So then I would either get rid of this or add to this to get them to be the same. Okay, so if, if, if there's an early cancer, we want to find out how, many, uh, how much of it is required or to what extent is there a uh, communication. And we have a number of critical, essential cancer markers that help Dr. Omura. One of them is called Integrin Alpha 5 Beta 1 that shows how active that cancer is. And the other one is 8-hydroxy-deoxyguanosine that shows how aggressive that cancer is. And we can find out how much of those molecules are in that pathology, in that cancer, in that person through the writing with the mouth, with the hand, with the feet, and, or we can do it directly on their body. And I've seen him do this many, many times, hundreds of patients over 16 years. And it is super accurate how we can detail the location of that cancer. Mm -hmm. And then we can give them something, like I showed you before, that gets them out of the realm where they're susceptible to the activity of that cancer and get beyond it to where it's no longer active. And the things I showed you earlier do that. So if the cancer is big, we can find it. If the cancer is tiny, I don't know how tiny it has to be, but it's not, it's not big, I can assure you. I don't know how many molecules, how, how much it needs to be, but it's far less than an MRI or a CT scan where a human eye can pick it up. And we've seen many times where the human radiologist could not see it, but we could find it, he could find it, and then a few weeks later, they found it on the x-ray or on the CT scan or on the MRI. So, that is called resonance, and it's, I believe it has changed medicine. It's just that they don't know about it yet, and I'd like them to know more about it. And this Dr. Amura has done a fantastic job. He spends all his weekends, <coughs> all his life, day and night, doing research, and that's why we have these incredibly beneficial substances that change our lives. And I myself can tell you, I am here because I'm a better man every time I meet this guy and we recalibrate, and we learn, and we get to answer things, and, and it's a wonderful life. Okay, have I done a good job already? Sure. All right. Thank you. The residence test. All right, so I might as well show you the true stomach 36 right now.